السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يعني دين آمن ويتق الله حق تكاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان لكم رقيبا يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يعطى الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل وحسن هدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر أمور محتوثاتها وكل محتوث في الإسلام بدع وكلوا بدعة دلالة وكلوا دلالة في النار our praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him and we extol Him. And we send the finest of salutations Allah Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Really, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah, Ta'ala, the Quran and Majid. And the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, Bidah. 
and every innovation in Islam is a going astray, and every going astray leads to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all safe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all thabat and firm on the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With that said, as we now end off the new year and we are now heading into the tail end of the festivities, whereas people will be gearing up and getting ready for the Gregorian New Year. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid is sought. Alhamdulillah, I mean, as people of Iman, people who have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as such, we follow the teachings that have come by way of the Quran and that of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as such, we are not going to be so liable and so gullible to follow these traditions that have become bedrock of this society. As we all know, ever since the advent of the internet, that the Christians themselves have been debating about the need of putting up lights and having all of these Christmas festivities. And they know that these things, according to themselves, debating, has nothing to do with Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salam. Nothing to do with Jesus. Now, they have brought in a new celebration since the early 60s and 70s, catering to the African-American community, calling it Kwanzaa. And they themselves are in the debates and discussions. Do we really need to celebrate this thing as a substitute for celebrating Christmas? Because they attribute Christmas to the white Jesus. So now they put Kwanzaa in place so as to appease the people of color, the people of African-American descent. When are we, as Muslims, well, alhamd, we know that the Prophet Sallallahu had stated, la farq bin al-arabin wa ajmeen illa bi taqwa. There is no farq, there is no differentiation between the Arab or the non-Arab, the red and the white, except in Piety, alhamd. So when are we as people of taqwa and piety, the people of the shahada, la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, gonna stop pleasing and pleasing these people who are debating about this amongst themselves and be people of taqwa? Why do we always have to have an apologetic stance by wishing them for everything that comes up? congratulating them on everything that comes up, as if we have no backbone. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. Adir Prasad Iman, we know as people of common sense and principles that those people who are claiming to be ringing in the new year under the pretext that after that, they will cut out certain vices from their lives. They're going to stop doing X, Y, and Z. But we know, and they know, that they'll be involved in every sinful activity under the sun. But when the ball drops in Times Square, when New Year's Eve strikes 12, they said that they're going to make a New Year's resolution. They're only using that as a crutch to say that they're going to stop drinking, they're going to stop smoking cigarettes or drugs or any form of narcotics. Why? This is just things that they say. And there isn't anything that is real behind those words. 
they use the guise of the New Year's resolution as a crutch. But in reality, in actuality, it's meaningless. Why do they say this? Because when they get drunk or high, they lose their mind. They don't know what they're doing. So they will beat their wives, or they'll beat their children, or they'll sleep around, they'll womanize. That's why they feel that they have to cut these things out. Not because it's a bad thing. No, because of the result of these things. On the other hand, you'll see those who are involved in all of those activities and say that in the new year, I'm going to cut them out. Not because it's a bad thing, but because it's a court order. The judge said that you must seek treatment or you have to quit. And now we see many Muslims who are following in the same pattern of behavior, where you see Muslims under Islamic guise that in the coming year, we're making the same sorts of resolutions, that in the coming year, as the ball drops, my New Year's resolution is I'm going to cut out X, Y, and Z. Why? Because it's haram, we say. But in actuality, there's a court order. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. My dear brothers and many men, regardless of if we know the pagan origins of New Year's or Christmas or any of the other festivities that they have, regardless if we know the pagan origins of New Year's, for example, and that the ancient Babylonians, they would take that as a time to seek blessings, to seek blessings and making promises to their God to give them blessing in the coming year and health and more fruitfulness in their crops. We, as people of Iman, as people of faith, and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that it's haram. Why? We don't understand and we didn't take time to research. We didn't do the research. But as people of iman and taqwa, we should at least know that it is not permissible. It is haram for us to mimic and imitate the people of disbelief. The people who are considered as kufar. This is what we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Allah guides us to the straight path and not the path. Those who are cursed, those people who are astray. We have to understand, my dear Salman Iman, that whether we know the origins of these traditions of Christmas or Kwanzaa, as people of Iman and Taqwa, we must have at least enough faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not imitate those people. They need guidance. We, don't, we need to stop being so apologetic to them by congratulating them in their kufr and shirk. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. We need to at least stand on our Islamic morality and dignity enough to say that we don't follow societal norms. Least they'll question themselves. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, they invited him to the festival. Come with us. He said, in his saqim. And we tell our children the story, like it's a bedtime story. What is the moral behind that? Ibrahim alayhi salam, he lied for the sake of Allah. And there's different interpretations that he lied for the sake of Allah because he was really sick of this, the shirk and the kufr around him. At the same time, he was sick, but he had a plan to educate his people. He had a strong stance. That's why we are the ummah who follows in the millah of Ibrahim al-Hanif. 
he broke all of the idols and he left the axe beside the biggest one. We all know the story. And they came back angry from their festivities. Who did this to our gods, they asked. They said, we heard a small boy speaking about our gods. His name is Ibrahim. They asked Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he said, why don't you ask the big one? The act is beside the big one. Why don't you ask it if it can speak? He caused them to think. He caused them to come back to themselves and to think about what they're involved with, what they were worshipping. But other than that, my dear brothers and man, other than allowing us to have a strong stance, we are so apologetic. We are so meek and apologetic. Why? What are we afraid of? To even have a conversation. There's a hadith. It's a hey, if you're a Muslim. So if you're a Abdullah reported, I said, O Messenger of Allah, inform me about an action in Islam after which I will not ask anyone else. The Prophet he said, Pull a man to Billah for stakim. Say that I believe in Allah. And be upright on that belief. Be firm on that belief. Alhamdulillah, I mean, there is nothing wrong with wanting to better ourselves. If we want to leave off overeating or eating too much at night, cutting out certain foods, exercising, eating more vegetables, praying more in the masajid, giving more in charity, there is nothing wrong with having that resolve to want to better ourselves to do these good things. But not under the false pretext that we're going to wait until the ball drops. I made an intention. I made um, a resolution. And I'm going to wait until the ball drops. I'm gonna, everybody's watching. And we're waiting. I'm going to keep it a secret to myself. But that's what I want to do. And that's what everybody does. But you'll see the results. What happened with lakum dinakum waliyadin? What happened with that? The simplicity of that statement. For you, your way, and for me, my way. We don't need to wait for any moment to do good and want to do good and to give. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us, and he was our example in all of the goodness. But now we see and we hear Muslims, whenever we're intending to do good, we say, knock on wood. And we're actually looking for a piece of wood, not knowing the origins of this statement and this action. We do this out of custom. We do this because we're, we have so much seen it happening around us, in the office, in the school. Knock on wood. I wish you luck. Fingers crossed. We say so many things. And we're doing so many things, not understanding the origins of these traditions. We know that whenever we want to do good, then we have to put our, our best foot forward and strive to do good. Not because it's good. That's Kalam Fadi. We know as people of Iman, that when we resolve to do good, we are getting rewarded before we even step foot in the arena of doing that good on the basis of our intention. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ is innama al-amalu biniyat. manawat al-hadith. That all of our deeds are founded upon our intentions and will all be rewarded with what we intend. When we want to do anything, the Prophet ﷺ said, If any of you does an action, then do it to the best of your ability. Whenever we do work, we make effort, we want to try and better ourselves in every step we take. Muslims, we don't do things haphazardly. We don't do things haphazardly. We make an effort to do our deeds. We make an effort to do whatever we do. Whether we're packing boxes, whether we're laying cement, we try and do it to the best of our ability. That's what Muslims are supposed to be. 
That's the representation that we give of Islam. That whatever did we do, faqinu. We remember this hadith of the Prophet. If any of you does a deed, pay attention and do it to the best of your ability. Alhamdulillah, I mean, Alhamdulillah, I mean, for being guided to Islam. We need to understand, my dear Prophet, man, that the correct Islamic approach to these festivities in this part of the world is that we need to be strong and firm on our deen and our Islam and our Iman. We need not be afraid. We are not afraid. We are not fearful of the blame of the blamers as people of Iman. When are we going to realize that these things are just facades? They're just passing illusions of fun and frolic and amusement. People are getting together. They're only using this as a crutch to commit zina, to drink, to do so many things and blame it on the alcohol, blame it on the narcotics. We need to be wise, my dear man. We need to be wise. We have to stop being apologetic and understand that Allah Azawajal, He told His Prophet Islam to tell to the kuffar, "Lakum dinakum waliyadin." May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us and give us the strength to be strong, fearless, practicing Muslims. Amen. Bismillah, salatu salam, and the Rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sahabi matabir huda wa bad. As I mentioned at the beginning of our khutbah today, is that many people will be ringing in the new year. We just now are closing off this festive season in North America. And as we see, people are giving that plastic smile and plastic sense of joy and happiness. But the reality will soon kick in because they were not real about their intentions. They were not real and genuine with their intentions to do good. You have to understand, Mr. Son and Man, that we have these festivities that they're set up as money making in this part of the world. We all know that, but still we line up for the Boxing Day deals. And still, we're wishing each other happy and blessed and graceful to these festivities. As I mentioned by the Son of Man, is that now people will be making what they call, I'm making air quotes, New Year's resolutions. Why? As a crutch. Because they want to say that they're going to drink, they're going to smoke, as much as they can, because in the new year, they're going to stop. They're going to quit. And we all know that it's not true. The majority, the overwhelming majority, 90% of people who make New Year's resolutions, they don't keep them up. Somebody about something, man. We have to understand that if we want good for ourselves and our community, it all comes about by way of Taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. We need to always consider that we're here today and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where we'll be the next day. So for anybody to say, I have made up my resolution that in the new year I'm going to do such and such. How do we know we're going to live to see the new year, the coming year? Only Allah knows. So if we want to do good, we need to have top of Allah and live by what I consider as a LSR, learning, studying, and reflection. We need to be a person who is constantly learning and, and studying things. And then we make a conscious reflection over those issues, over those things that we've seen, we've heard, we've experienced. And then, inshallah, on a daily basis, we'd be a person of taqwa. 
on a daily basis, we were a person of taqwa, iman. And then, inshallah, we will change. We will see ourselves changing into a better version of ourselves. We should never wait. Because this is not the way of Islam. Whenever we have an opportunity to do good, we think about that good. And we try and consider how we'll be able to make those improvements into our lives. And then, inshallah, we will be able to be a better person. Day after day. Look at ourselves. Evaluate our circumstances. And then, inshallah, we take the necessary steps. And by the permission of Allah, we will be a better version of ourselves. At least, in the least bit, as Muslims, as Muslims, even if we don't know the pagan origins of this made-up holiday of, of, of Christmas, Kwanzaa, New Year's, all of these festivities, they have an origin that has nothing to do with Christianity or religion. Even if we don't know these things, at least, in the least we should know that it is not permissible for us as Muslims, as people of Iman, people of real faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow those who are lower and less than us. Allah blessed us, Izzana. He honored us with Islam, with the kalima la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. But yet, we follow those who don't have this blessing. What did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? The hadith of Abu Abdullah ibn Umar. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala be pleased him and his father. Man tashabha biqam fa huwa minhum. Whosoever imitates a people, then they are from them. Check it out, Tamia. He said that. This warning, at the very least, is a stern warning for us to not imitate the disbelievers. And it indicates that the person is like them, meaning a disbeliever. But in the least, this is a stern warning that we shouldn't imitate them. Why? Because a person will eventually feel an inferiority complex. When we feel inferior to somebody, then we want to imitate them. We admire them. We look up to them. So as much as we will say, no, I like this, I like that. But in reality, why we imitate them in their customs, their traditions, and their dress, and their manners of speech, is because we admire them. And we want to be like them. But who should we imitate? Who should we emulate? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khayda khalqillah. I want to leave us with, and close with one last statement. This can be found in Surah Ibrahim, verse number 22, where Allah azza has reminded us. And what are we speaking about? The inadequacy and the fact that many Muslims are imitating those who are less than them. Why? Because we have developed an inferiority complex. I want to leave us with, with this last statement that Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, verse number 22. What Iblis, la'natullah, will say to those who followed him. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes with the judgment between the people and those who had iman and yaqeen, faith, they ended up in paradise. May Allah make us one of them. And those who had disbelief and shak and doubt in their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they ended up in the nar, Iblis. He will stand up in the midst of the people in the hellfire. And he will deliver them something like a khutbah, a sermon. And to add depression on top of their depression by saying, I had no authority over you except that I called you and you responded to me. Meaning you obeyed me by following the false desires that I whispered into you. Why? So that we will not feel the feeling that we are left out. Why? So we'll feel that we're accepted by the people. So that we will not feel and look strange in the eyes of the people. So we'll not feel 
that we're left out and we're singled out or people are going to speak about us. Rather than to listen to the people who are inviting you to Iman and advising you about Iman, what will Shaitan say? So now you know what? So do not blame me. Today, Ulumu and Fusukum. Blame yourselves for defying the proofs and the evidences that have been conveyed to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be of those who hear Yastami al Qawl, we Tabiuna Ahsana. Be of those who hear the good speech and follow the best thereof. Amin. In Allah, my two saluna and Nabi, Yaladina Amenu. So listen, Homosil and Muhammad, Walla and Muhammad, come us later, La Ibrahim, Walla Ibrahim, Nakaham de Majid, Al Homa Barakal Muhammad, Walla and Muhammad, come a Barakala Ibrahim, Walla Ibrahim, Nakaham de Majid, or of an art in if to Hassan. Perfect, who knows the money? I'm Salah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله